So lately a lot of people have been asking how my birth went and to describe it in one word I would use the word chaotic and I think that that's a word that a lot of people would use for their first birth but to give you an idea of how chaotic it was we had to give them a verbal consent to treat us as I was pushing because we didn't have time <laughs> to sign the paperwork and um, I didn't sign the paperwork until after she was born after like we did the whole weight check and everything and when they gave me the paperwork to sign one of the head people was like uh how come you didn't get them to sign this already and the nurse that was in our room attending us was like uh it's been a little chaotic so that's the word that i use to describe my birth <laughs> hello it's been a while i'm samantha and today I thought I would get on here and share my birth story. Uh, I obviously have a very special guest with me today. So I'm going to try to do this story without waking her up. Now, let me tell you that I did not think that I would be making it to her due date at all. At around 37 weeks, it was, it was really 36 weeks, um, I started getting contractions that would happen at night that were way more intense than Braxton Hicks, but still not super painful. I could sleep through them. Really around 37 weeks, getting close to 38 weeks, everything started picking up. Um, the contractions were consistently every single night, but then when I would wake up in the morning, the contractions would be gone, and it would just be a cycle of that every single night. I started getting a lot of signs that I would be going into labor soon. So she had dropped down in my belly and she had been down for a really long time. It was kind of like harder for me to walk and stuff. I was also losing lots of my mucus plug. Oh, I was also having a lot of lower back pain at 37 weeks. I, I remember I went to my 38 week appointment and I was not expecting to come back for a 39 week appointment. I really thought that she would be definitely coming by then. then like the day after my 38 week appointment, she kind of moved back up into my stomach. She wasn't super low down anymore. And I stopped having like all the back pain and all the other labor signs. Um, but I was still having those contractions at night. So basically from 36, 37 weeks on, I was getting those stronger contractions at night that would fizzle out by morning. 39 weeks, I went back and that was the first time I had a cervical check. At that appointment, I was two centimeters dilated and about 70% effaced. I came out of that appointment being like, okay, that doesn't really tell me anything, but at least like those contractions that I was having at night were doing something. The doctor was very encouraged by that because this is my first baby. And she said that if we did have to induce, which we, she didn't think that we would have to, that me being dilated and effaced would help. And it would make uh, that process go a little bit faster and easier. So I was encouraged by that, but still I wasn't really feeling anything. I was not feeling like I was going to go into labor at all. And then I got to December 21st, which was her due date, and I did have a doctor's appointment on that day. So I went into my doctor's appointment that day, and the doctor told me that I was 80% effaced and 3 centimeters dilated by that point. And I was like, okay, great, at least I'm progressing, um, but I'm kind of ready to have this baby. Um, I really expected to have had her by now because everyone in my family has their babies early. Okay, I knew this would happen. Um, we have a leak in one of our rooms, so there are some people here working on the roof now. My doctor had let me know that she wanted me to be induced at 41 weeks if I made it that far. I didn't really want to be induced, I really wanted to go into it naturally, so I was hoping that wasn't the case. So we said, is there anything we can do? right now to like help induce labor and she was like well we could try to do a membrane sweep since you're three centimeters dilated and 80 percent of base like i can do that and i was like okay let's go ahead and try that so she did a membrane sweep if you, i'm not going to go into the details of what that is like you can look that up if you don't know um so she did that and then she told me that it was likely that i would have some cramping and some bleeding from the membrane sweep I had some initial bleeding right when she did that, um, but after that I kind of stopped bleeding. The doctor told me that if the membrane sweep was going to be successful, then I would probably go into labor in the next 24 hours. So I went home, I had a lot of cramping like she said, and it was kind of just annoying and uncomfortable because, you know, I was already pretty uncomfortable because I was 40 weeks pregnant. 
and then here I was having all this cramping. So basically I was like, man, I really hope that this works because if it doesn't work, then I just went through all of this annoying cramping for no reason. Then nighttime happens. I start having the same contractions that I have all the time, but I was having more bleeding at that point. Um, I was having some like bloody show as they say. So that was definitely a good sign. And so I went to sleep thinking I could go into labor. I could not, who knows. I woke up the next day, still haven't gone into labor. I don't know if you can hear that. Gray actually took work off that day because his parents were in town because they were trying to be here when the baby came. Um, the thing about it is, is that they were going to go home on the, the 22nd of December. Um, their flight out was at like, nine o'clock at night. So they were kind of just playing it by ear, trying to figure out if they should cancel their flights or reschedule or what, because they wanted to be home by Christmas, but they also wanted to see the baby. The weird thing was I was still having contractions and I was like, whoa, maybe this is a sign because I'm having contractions in the morning and normally I only have them at night. So I got out my little trusty timer app and I started timing the contractions. They were somewhere between four and eight minutes apart. So then I called my mom and I was like, hey, I'm not in really that much pain, but like this is happening. And she's like, okay, we're gonna come over. So my mom and my dad and my sister came over and Gray's mom, dad, and sister also came over. And Gray actually had planned to make bagels for everybody in the morning cause he's good at making homemade bagels. So everyone actually was already planning on coming over um, anyways. And so then we were just hanging out in the living room, eating bagels, we were playing Family Feud. Um, and I was just still timing the contractions and I was really waiting for them to be more painful. And so then what ended up happening was my contractions did get a little bit more painful, um, but only every other one. So it was like they were five minutes apart but it was like I would have one big contraction and then one like smaller one that was like barely a thing but you could still know it was a contraction because I knew it was happening and I was like confused by this. I was like what does this mean? Another thing that you have to know is that my family has a history of really really quick labors. So basically when my sister found out she was going into labor she had her baby within four hours with her first baby and my mom um, I think was within five hours with her first baby which is pretty rare for a first kid usually for your first baby your labors go way slower so I was kind of like cautious thinking my labor could go really quick and I told this to my OB so my OB told me you should go in to the hospital when your contractions are between five and seven minutes she said usually we recommend when they're between like three and five minutes, but I want you to go when it's between five and seven minutes. The other thing was that we had a blizzard warning on our phones. So it was a little bit confusing because we had this blizzard warning, but there wasn't any snow in the forecast. So we were like, how can you have a blizzard when there's no snow in the forecast? But we did have like, at least two inches, two inches, two feet of snow on the ground, maybe three feet in some places. And so what they were forecasting was really, really high winds that were supposed to blow the snow that was already on the ground around and make it just like really hard visibility. And they were just, they were, cause they were saying that this was considered a blizzard and that it was a blizzard warning. So we were like, um, I don't want to be driving to the hospital in a blizzard, even though we didn't really understand. We just moved to Alaska um, over the summer, so we didn't really understand what a blizzard was or like how you could have a blizzard with no new snow. So, but we were still like, okay, they're calling for a blizzard. They probably know what they're talking about. So uh, maybe we should just go to the hospital so that we're there. My, my sister was telling me you should really go in because I didn't know I was really in labor and I had my baby on the bathroom floor because we didn't get to the hospital in time because once like we realized everything was bad, it was too late. So she was like, you should really go in. And she's like, there's no way that you haven't progressed. You're probably already at like six centimeters or something ridiculous like that because everybody in our family goes quick. So I was like, okay, that's a good point. Like we should just go in to check. So in the car on the way over, I was just riding with Gray and, um, some other people were coming just to wait in the waiting room, but they were in a separate car. But 
I was with Gray and I was telling him, I'm going to be so annoyed if I get there and I haven't progressed. If I'm still three centimeters when we get there, I'm going to be really discouraged. And if they send me home, then I don't know what's going to happen because I'm the type of person where if they sent me home and they said, hey, you're overreacting, then I'm not gonna wanna go back because they're, cause I'm not gonna want that to happen again. And so I'm like, if they send me home, we're probably gonna have a baby at home because I'm just gonna like wait till the last second and not know when she's coming. Um, we get to the hospital, they hook me up to the monitors to monitor the contractions and she does the cervical check. This nurse that did the cervical check, she just was so rough. And it was like painful. And I, I was like, what the heck? I had no idea that this was supposed to be painful. And Gray was like watching this happen and she was, and he was just like, she was super forceful. Like she would just like jam her hand up as quick as possible, like not going quick, slow at all. And so I was like, this is uncomfortable. Anyway, uh, when she did the circle check, I had not progressed at all from the day before. So I was still three centimeters and 80% effaced. And she did say something like, oh, well, it kind of feels like your water sack is bulging a little bit, but that's basically it. She said, you look exactly the same. And so they told me that you're probably not in labor. You're probably just having side effects of the membrane sweep. And so I was like, oh, okay, I guess. Cause they did say that the membrane sweep could cause contractions and they were not really painful. Like I could still walk and I could still talk through them. But since you haven't progressed at all, you can either go home and come back if things get worse or you can walk around for an hour. Um, you can sit in the bathtub if you want and we can recheck you in an hour. And I was like, okay, let's just do that because why not? Frey and I went into the tub room and I sat in the tub for almost an hour. I was still like timing the contractions. They were getting like more consistently painful. It wasn't like every other one anymore. It was like kind of everyone was about the same level of pain, um, but I was in the bathtub so made me feel a lot better. So then we went back and she checked me again and she says, you still have not progressed at all. And I'm like, this is not going quick. Like my sister said it would, my mom said it would. They said that their labors went so quick. Like this is not going quick. And so then they said, we think you should either go home or we should do something to kind of speed this along. We should break your water for you or you should go home. And I was like, I don't really want them to break my water for me because I don't really want things to happen not naturally. Cause my goal going into this was to have a natural birth, no medication, no epidural, just a regular natural vaginal delivery. And so the nurse said, why don't I give you a little bit of time to talk it over? So Gray and I were talking and I was like, I don't want them to really break my water, but I also really don't want to go home because I feel like if I go home, I'm going to have a baby at home because I'm not going to want to come back and maybe have them send me home again. And also there's a blizzard warning. So if we go home, is it going to be harder to get back to the hospital? So we were like balancing all of these things. Then we were like, is it possible for us just to stay for another hour and see how things go? Because clearly my contractions were worse. My mom actually came back and she, um, cause she was waiting in the waiting room and she hadn't seen me in an hour. And since she hadn't seen me in an hour, she could really tell that my contractions were worse than they were. Um, so she was like, yeah, like, I think you are progressing. I just, contractions always do something. Like, even though you are not more dilated, contractions are always doing something. Um, and so she was really pushing for us to stay because she didn't want us to have to drive back in the blizzard. Plus, they were still convinced that I was gonna have a quick labor. We asked the nurse, like, can we wait around for another hour? And she's like, eh, I don't know, let me ask your doctor. And then the doctor was like, okay, yeah, fine, they can do that. And, but, but the nurse still, again, said, like, you really should just go home or break your water. Like, it's probably not gonna do you any good since you haven't progressed, like, this entire time that you've been here. And I was like, kind of getting annoyed at this point. So we waited around for like 20 minutes. I was like, I don't know if I could go home and sleep through these. Like, these are more painful. So I was wearing a hospital gown and I had nothing on underneath it. So I actually went and put on my underwear because I was like, okay, if nothing's progressing, then I can be a little bit more comfortable by putting on my underwear. So I did that. I was like, I could guess I could go home and rest a little bit. And my mom was like, no, you really shouldn't. And Gray was kind of just like, do whatever you want. And um, so finally I was just annoyed. I was annoyed that I hadn't progressed. I was annoyed that I'd come into the hospital and they were like, nothing's happening. So I was like, you know what? Let's just leave. 
Right after I said that, I just had this like super painful contraction and then I actually got on all fours on the bed and was kind of just like, man, this like really hurts. And then all of a sudden I just felt this pop and this gush. So my water broke. And I was like, and I think I said something like, there it is, there it is, because I was like, I don't think Gray or my mom knew it was happening yet until they like saw the water like dripping out. But like I said, I had just put my underwear on, so my underwear was soaked. But it was actually a good thing because then they could check it and they could check to make sure that the amniotic fl fluid was clear, which it was, it was like perfectly clear. Um, so that means that we didn't have like any complications with that. This was probably, yeah, this was a little bit over an hour since we had gotten to the hospital. They were like, in a little while, we'll do another cervical check um, because you can start progressing a lot more when your water breaks sometimes. So we were like, okay, great. Oh, and the other thing that happened, right when my water broke, I started shaking. Like, have you ever had like the involuntary like response where your body just starts shaking? It happens to me a lot um, right after I have surgery or something and I'm like, under anesthesia and it's like my body like can't stop shaking. I guess it was like in shock or like something, I don't know. So my body starts shaking and that was like kind of exhausting, but whatever. And then every contraction after my water broke was a lot more intense. Um, and it just like seemed to happen really quickly. So they lasted, they started lasting longer. They started being like 45 seconds long and they started getting way closer together. Um, and so like immediately after the nurse came in, I was like, can I get back into the bathtub? Because I was in a lot of pain. And she was like, yeah, you can get back into the bathtub, like, or um, we can get you one of the rooms that has the bigger bathtubs and you don't have to use the tub room. And we were like, oh, okay, great, let's do that. So we got our room and <laughs> I just remember thinking like nothing was moving quick enough. I just remember being like, if you're gonna check my cervix, then do it right now, like before I have another contraction. Like, cause in my head, I knew when my contractions were happening and I was like, you need to do this now. And then they were like, all right, you can move to the tub room. I'm like, no, we, I wanted to do that like a minute ago, right after I had the last contraction so that I could walk. And so it was like, I just remember thinking everything was going so slowly and they weren't doing things at the right time. And so like before we went to the room, I like paused and I like leaned against Gray um, to have the contraction. And I was like, man, like these are intense. I was like, I don't know if I can do this because like it wasn't the worst pain ever, but it was really intense. And I was like, if I'm still at three centimeters, I've got a long way to go. And this is like a pretty good amount of pain. And so um, we get to the room and I immediately start filling up the tub and it just took so long to fill up the bathtub. It took so long. And so I ended up getting in it like while the water was like only this full. Um, and so I got in and my contractions were like clo way closer together. Um, I think Gray told me that at this point they were between one and three minutes apart. Sometimes I would get three minutes between them, but sometimes I would only get one minute between them and they were starting to last a minute. And they were so painful at this point. They were like, your, your doctor's gonna come and talk to you. So my doctor came down and she was like, hey, I just wanna check in on you. Um, like, how are things going? And I'm like, I think I might need the epidural because, you know, uh, 30 minutes ago, I was only at three centimeters and I'm in the worst pain that I've felt in my life. And she was like, yeah, that's okay. Like, you can do that. Um, I'm just checking on you before I go home. I've got to go home. My husband needs something, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, so if she's going home, this must really be, like... Oh. I was like, if she's going home, then this must really be something that's going to take a long time. Like, I must be nowhere close. And everyone thinks that I'm nowhere close. And so she leaves. I kept feeling the urge to push a little bit, but I was like, I was like, oh, like I probably shouldn't do that because I'm nowhere close. Like maybe I'm at five centimeters by now, but I'm nowhere close. And, but then it would start to feel good if I pushed a little bit. So I did push a little bit while I was in the bathtub and I just like didn't tell anyone about it. Um, 
but the contractions were so painful and I was like this is good if this is gonna go on for hours and hours because at this point I was like my mom and my sister were wrong I'm not having a quick delivery um, I've been at three centimeters for a really really long time and I've been having these contractions and nothing's progressing I'm not having a quick delivery so I was like they're wrong so I told Gray, like, I really think I need the epidural because I cannot do this for hours and hours and hours. Like, this is really painful. And all, the whole time I'm still shaking. And he's just like, can you try to stop shaking? Because it seems really exhausting that, like, even when you're not having a contraction, you're still shaking this bad. I'm like, yeah, it is really exhausting, but I couldn't stop shaking. So I waited until I wasn't having a contraction. And, you know, I've been doing this for a while. And I was like, okay. I think I need to do the yeah. epidural. So Gray went out of the bathroom and he went to go tell the nurse that was in our room, like kind of getting the bed ready. Like they were still setting up the room at this point. Like it had not been that much time. And um, they, he was like, hey, she really wants a epidural. And she, she was like, okay, let me like go see what the anesthesiologist is doing. But before she gets the epidural, we're gonna do a cervical check. And he was like, great, because Gray had basically been saying, we should get them to check your cervix. We should get them to check your cervix. And I kept being like, I don't care. And I didn't really want them to check it because I didn't want them to tell me that I was like still at three centimeters. And then I would have been like really annoyed that like I still hadn't progressed. So I was like, I don't really care. Like we're doing this right now. I'm in the bathtub. I don't want them to check the cervix. And he was just like, I really think that we should. And he just kept saying that. And I just kept being like, I don't care. I don't care. And I'm like, I'm just going to accept that this is going to be more like a normal person's delivery and I'm going to have a really long labor. I'm just going to accept that. And so then the nurse went to go get the anesthesiologist and she comes back and she says, hey, the anesthesiologist is, has a thing coming up so he can either do this in 30 minutes or he can do this in three hours. And I was, so she was like, so you need to decide if you want it now then you need to have it like right now she was like okay well why don't you get out of the bathtub and we'll get the anesthesiologist we'll do a cervical check before he comes in and then he can start the process and I was like great let's do that so I get out of the bathtub and then everything was just like immediately more painful because I wasn't in the bathtub anymore the bathtub was helping my pain clearly I basically felt like I just needed to be in like kind of a hunched over position or like an all fours position the entire time but then the anesthesiologist comes in basically right after I get my hospital gown back on and he's like all right like I'm, let's do this and the nurse was like, okay, let's go. And Gray was like, what about the cervical check? And they were like, oh, well, like he's here now. Let's just check it afterwards. And he was, and then he was asking me like, are you sure you don't want them to do the check right now? And I was like, no, I don't care. Let's just do this. Um, I know that I'm nowhere close. So <laughs> foreshadowing. Basically you need to be in a certain position to get the epidural. And I did not want to be in that position. It was like really painful to be in that position. And like I said, like I still was having like these feelings of pushing, but once I got into the sitting down position, I didn't really have those anymore. Or like I kind of still had them, but it didn't feel the same. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Basically it just felt more painful being in the sitting position that I had to be in. And while this is going on, I'm still having the contractions between one and three minutes apart. They're still lasting a minute. They're extremely painful. I have my arms on Gray's shoulders and I have to stay still while I put this needle in, which would have been fine if it took the amount of time that they said it was gonna take. But then they have to do this thing where they test something uh, with the epidural before they can like actually give you the epidural. So, uh, they had to hook me up to these machines and like this machine wouldn't work So they spent like 10 minutes trying to get this machine to work and it felt like the longest 10 minutes of my life Because I'm still sitting there feeling the full pain of all the contractions and not being in the position I want to be in and not being able to move because I have this needle on my back and they tell me to stay still at that point I'm like almost t thinking of telling them just take it out and let me sit how I want to sit because I was, I, I was like, I really just need to not be in this position. I need to be in a different position because clearly she wanted to come out and I was not in the right position to help her to come out. I was like that close to telling them that finally they got the machine working. I, I don't know if that's something they can do. I don't know if they can take the needle out at that point, but I really wanted them to. And um, then at that point they finally got the machine working and I, I kept, and so they were like, all right, like it's working now. Like you can give her the epidural and I was like,
finally. It started working like pretty quickly, like my contractions were less intense and then I couldn't feel them at all. And so after the 10 minutes of um, when they came in and they were like, hey, like, do you feel anything? And I'm like, no, I don't feel anything. So after that 10 minutes that they told me to wait to see if the epidural worked, they're like, okay, we're gonna put the catheter in and we're gonna do a cervical check in. And I think Gray just breathed a sigh of relief, like finally they're checking my cervix. So they put the catheter in and they checked my cervix and basically there were two nurses. There was one that was like the regular nurse at the hospital and there was another one that they were clearly training, um, but she seemed like she knew what she was doing. Like she seemed like she had been a nurse labor and delivery nurse before, but she hadn't been at the hospital. So she was kind of just like learning the ways of the hospital. So she was the one that was checking me and she like put her hand in and was like, I don't feel anything. Like I don't feel a cervix. And she was like, what, what the heck? And then the other nurse was like, let me see. And she was like, yeah, like, she's like, you're complete. You're 10, you're 10 centimeters, you're complete. And the baby is at a plus one station. And so then the nurse started like freaking out because the doctor had just gone home and she was probably already home at that point because it had been like 30 or 40 minutes. And um, so she's like, I need to call the doctor right now. And so she runs out of the room and calls the doctor to try to get the doctor to come. And she was like, and I, and I was kind of like, okay, so if I'm complete, does that mean I need to start pushing? Because like, that's what I was, I was under the impression that once you know you're 10 centimeters you need to start pushing so, and so then I was like okay so now I understand why I was in so much pain because I was I was at 10 centimeters and probably when I was feeling like I should push I probably should have been pushing all that time and probably while I was sitting there waiting for the epidural I was just stalling everything because I was not in the right position the nurse is like wow you weren't kidding it says in your chart like your family has a history of quick flavors and I was like yeah she's like well you guys weren't really kidding about that and I'm like I guess not and so um so they call the doctor and the doctor comes back and they, they're basically like, okay you just sit here and I was like oh okay I can just sit here and like obviously I wasn't feeling contractions so I wasn't feeling like I needed to really push that much and basically they were like she's at a plus one so we'll try to like move her down farther so it'll be easier for you to push so it takes the doctor like 20 or 30 minutes to get there and then the baby was still at plus one and they're like, okay, so she hasn't moved down at all. Like, let's try to lay you on your side and use this peanut pillow and try to make the baby come down. And um, I was like, okay, like, sure. And because I was like, at this point, I'm not feeling anything. So I don't really care that I'm not pushing the baby out. Like, sure, I wanted this to go quicker, but whatever. And Gray had actually gone out to the waiting room where our family was and had told them like, hey, she's like at 10 centimeters, she's complete. Like, it's gonna be happening soon. It's basically, in the two hours since my last cervical check, I had gone from three centimeters to 10. It was like 7.45 or something when my doctor came in um, at that point. And it was now like 10 p.m. And nothing was happening. Like she wasn't moving down farther. I was like, what the heck? I thought that when you are 10 centimeters and complete, like you're supposed to have a baby. But I guess that's just when you have a natural birth and when you have an epidural, they can like, let you wait a little bit longer um, and try to get the baby farther down but then they just came in and they're like all right let's just start you pushing and I was like so I could have done this a long time ago but anyway whatever so I started pushing whenever I was having contractions which was like super weird and like I couldn't feel anything so I didn't really know like I had them like telling me when I was having contraction and I didn't really know how to push I probably pushed for something 20 something minutes um, and then her head was crowning they called the doctor in and the doctor delivered her. So she was born on 12 22 22 at 22 12. Then I delivered the placenta and she was on my chest. Everything was going perfectly smoothly. It's like she was healthy. She was on my chest for a really long time. And I'm like, like, how is everything going with the stitching? And she was like, this is just really kind of complicated. And I was like, oh no, like how bad is the tear? And she was like, well, it's only a second degree tear um, out of four, but it's like in these really weird places and they had to call in like other nurses and get special tools and stuff so that she was able to see. She was like, I'm really just trying to do a good job so that you heal all right, but like this is a really, really weird tear and it's like going up and I don't really know exactly, obviously I couldn't see it. So Gray and I were just enjoying 
having her while they took like an hour at least to stitch me up. And I was just like, well, uh, sorry to all the people who are in the waiting room that want to see her because this is taking a really long time. So it took them like an hour to stitch her up. Um, then we tried breastfeeding and then we weighed her. Um, she weighed eight pounds exactly. And finally, after that, all that, Greg got to hold her and he enjoyed some time with her and then it was midnight and it was like past midnight at that point and I was breastfeeding her again and I was like okay why don't you let some of our family come in so that they can go home and um, they came in my mom my dad and my sister came in because you can only have four people at a time in the room so they came in first they met her and then they left and Gray's family came in and met her. And basically they told us that this blizzard had started and at the time that they were in the waiting room, like whenever someone would come in the sliding glass door, like the wind would blow and everyone would feel it and snow would just be blowing in. Um, and it's actually weird because they, they have like one sliding glass door and then they have a, like a hallway and then they have another sliding glass door but st still snow and stuff was like getting into like the main waiting room. Um, whenever the door would open, the ceiling tiles would just like be blowing. And so we were like, well, we're happy to be in the hospital during this because that means we don't have to worry about losing power <laughs> and we'll have heat and we'll have power. Um, and you know, and then later like my parents and Gray's parents, they were staying at like a VRBO and they lost power. Um, and they were trying to go over to my sister's place and uh, I think they lost power at one point and oh and Gray's parents did end up changing their flight obviously um, to a day later so they wanted to come back the next day and the blizzard was still like in full force then and we were like what time are we gonna go home because we had her at uh, 10 p.m. so um, they needed to do like the 24 hour checks and they were like you shouldn't go home like that late at night so you don't have to go home until the next day plus there's a huge blizzard happening so you probably don't want to drive in this anyway so we were like yeah okay like probably under normal circumstances I would have been like I want to get the heck out of this hospital but <laughs> I did not care to go home and possibly lose power and have to drive in a blizzard. Basically we heard lots of crazy stories every time my family would come back and visit about this blizzard. So I guess at one point Gray's parents were trying to get to my sister's house and they drove almost all the way there but then there was like this 10 foot snow drift that was like blocking them because the snow just blew in all these crazy places and then apparently like they were trying to pack up their car with their luggage but like the snow had caused like a big hill and so they had to like take the luggage over the hill and then uh their like bags started blowing away and they had to like run down the street and chase them like you can't see anything you don't know where you are and they're trying to drive in this to get to the hospital to see her because they wanted to and i'm just like nobody else is driving in this like you guys are the only ones on the road and like other people that are like doing some essential things and you know they just kept telling us stories about seeing people in ditches and getting stuck like on the off ramps of the highway and my dad like had to floor the car to like try to get over things and my mom was like I don't know how this happened and the other thing that was funny is that Everyone who would come into our hospital room, they would come into the room and then they would like put their hands in their pockets and they'd be like, there's ice in my pockets. Because from the walk from their car to the hospital, uh, it was blowing so much that ice would get like inside their pockets and they would just like start pulling snow and ice out of their pockets whenever they would walk in. So we had a good time with her um, in the hospital. Um, she passed all of her tests pretty well. Um, she had like her blood work and everything done at 24 hours um, and everything looked great and so then we were getting ready to leave and this is when we noticed that there was a solid sheet of ice like in between the two sliding glass doors like at how I told you there was like the sliding glass door and then the hallway and then the other sliding glass door to get into the hospital. That whole like hallway was just solid ice because of all the snow that had blown in, kind of melted and like refreezed and just formed this ice. So it was like so hard to walk where I was like, don't walk, like stay right there. I'm going to help you walk because 
obviously I was in pain after having the baby and like it was hard for me to walk. Um, so like he went out to the car and brought all the luggage back and forth and brought her and put her in the car and then he came back and got me and was like, and the, uh, the parking lot of the hospital was also like an ice rink. He was like, man, I've never like seen this much ice. But by the time we were leaving, the blizzard was completely over. So we drove home and we had fine visibility. Good job coming in the blizzard so that we got the hospital heat and electricity. That was, that was pretty good. And we didn't have to go during the blizzard, so we didn't have to drive during it. Really, it was great timing all around. Good job. So looking back on it, um, I wouldn't probably have done anything any other way. I was in the moment, like that was how I was feeling. I felt like I wanted the epidural. Um, I felt like I didn't care about the cervical checks, but I'm glad now that I kind of know. Uh, so if I have another baby, then I can know what it feels like to be almost ready to push the baby out. And then I can possibly have another chance of having a natural birth without medication because I am a little sad that I didn't get to have that um, because like I said they kind of made me think that it was going to be hours and hours and I was like there's no way I can do that um, next time I go in I will know what I'm feeling and I'll know like okay it's time to push the baby out so that's why I'm in this much pain and I could probably I can probably handle it for that much time. The other thing was, I was like, this is gonna get more painful? Like, how does this get more painful than this? So the next time I'll know more about what I'm feeling and how it goes for me. And also, I think the membrane sweep did mess it up a little bit. Um, I think that the membrane sweep kind of did cause me to have these like pre-contractions that weren't real contractions. So kind of, I probably wasn't really in labor until I got into the bathtub the first time at the hospital. That's when my contractions really did start being consistent and a little bit more painful. Before they were just kind of like a little bit painful and that could have just been the side effects of the membrane sweep. So next time hopefully I won't have to get a membrane sweep either because I do think that that kind of messed with me. But I am really grateful that I did have the membrane sweep this time because it worked and I did start labor within the next 24 hours and you know she's happy and she's healthy and um, I didn't have to get induced because I really didn't want to have to get induced. Sorry if that was super long and boring but yeah that's the story about how we had a baby in a blizzard. So you guys have probably noticed my uploads have not really been existing. Uh, obviously I've been dealing with a newborn. She is a month old now so that's really cool. Try not to put myself on a schedule or anything. Um, I'm just gonna upload when I can. So, don't know when the next one will be, but leave questions in the comments. I've also been really bad at responding to comments, but leave questions in the comments and maybe I'll do like a Q and A video or something to answer all the questions. Like maybe maybe I'll do that next. Anyway, leave questions in the comments, leave video ideas in the comments, and oh, about her name because people have been asking about her name. I'm not sure if I want to share that on the internet yet, just like for privacy. Probably you could figure it out if you did some like stalking and some digging um, because we have like told our friends and family her name. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to like put it out on YouTube for like a bunch of people to see yet. Um, we might change our mind on that, but for now we're just not going to do that. So check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you want. Yeah, that's all. Bye.